This is Danielle Yawovetska with the BBC News. Hello. The Syrian ambassador to the United Nations says there will be no discrimination between government and rebel-held zones of the country when it comes to distributing aid after last week's devastating earthquakes. Bassam al-Sabah said supplies would get to those who needed them. The first deliveries of aid have entered opposition-held areas of northern Syria through one of two newly opened border crossings with Turkey. Martin Schwepp from the International Committee of the Red Cross says the situation in the region is dire. This is a population that has already endured a lot of hardship, that has already been fragile, that has already been destabilized, and now this earthquake has certainly brought them to the brink of exhaustion. And it's a race against time to make sure that as much aid as possible can reach these people in order to help them stay warm, help to get food, help to get medicine. Nine more quake survivors have been rescued in Turkey, but the number confirmed killed in both countries is now more than 41,000. The World Health Organization says 26 million people require humanitarian aid, and the needs are only increasing, as are health risks, with millions homeless in near-freezing temperatures. Turkey's President Erdogan has said the quakes were as big as atomic bombs and one of the greatest natural disasters in history. He promised to launch an ambitious reconstruction plan. The White House has said preliminary evidence suggests three aerial objects shot down by U.S. jets were not involved in a wider Chinese espionage program. Here's Barbara Pletusher. What the administration is now saying that most likely these were benign objects, in other words, not spying, uh, and that they were possibly linked to some sort of commercial enterprise, possibly a research enterprise. And you know, they had from the start talked about them in a different way than the Chinese balloon. They called them objects. They said they were flying lower. They were smaller. They were detected following the shooting down of a giant Chinese surveillance balloon by the US earlier this month, which resulted in the postponement by the Secretary of State of a planned trip to China. Police in the United States have arrested four people for alleged involvement in the assassination of Haiti's President Jovenel Moise in 2021. Will Grant has more details. These arrests tie the assassination of the Haitian president, Jovenel Moïse, nearly two years ago to an alleged conspiracy based in Florida. The four men include a Venezuelan-American businessman called Antonio Intriago and a Colombian-American called Arcangel Pretel Ortiz. The group reportedly recruited more than 20 former Colombian soldiers who later stormed President Moise's home in the Haitian capital Port-au-Prince in July 2021. A third man, a financier, is accused of funding the operation and a fourth man accused of smuggling goods. World News from the BBC. Brazil's former president, Jair Bolsonaro, has said he's planning to return to the country in March to lead the opposition against the new left-wing government. Mr Bolsonaro, who's been in Florida since December, announced his plans in an interview with the Wall Street Journal. He said he'd proved that he'd had no involvement in the storming of the Brazilian Congress and other government buildings on January the 8th. At least three people are confirmed to have died in New Zealand after Cyclone Gabrielle struck the North Island on Monday. Around 10,000 people have been displaced and tens of thousands of homes are still without power. Some people have had to swim to safety, whilst others have been helicoptered off their roofs. Phil Mercer reports. For four hours, a group of orchard workers waited on the roof of a farm building in the Hawke's Bay region as the floodwaters rose. They were finally rescued by a helicopter. Hundreds of New Zealanders have similar stories of escape. Officials say the storm has moved off the coast and that the worst is over. But their warning conditions are still dangerous. A high-level National Security Crisis Committee has been convened as communities across New Zealand's North Island confront widespread devastation. Phil Mercer reporting there. The Taliban authorities in Afghanistan say they've killed three militants of the Islamic State group in a raid in Kabul. Several more were arrested, including one foreigner. The Taliban said some of those targeted were people who'd organised recent attacks in the capital. Scientists in America say they may have developed a drug for use in a contraceptive pill for men. They say it works by temporarily stopping sperm from propelling itself. The drug switches off an enzyme that sperm need to be able to swim and reach a female egg. And that's the latest BBC World News.